thank you for the opportunity to spend a little bit of time this morning discussing some of the trials that may or may not have uh, changed practice in transplantation over recent years. Over the next 20 minutes or so, I'm going to address three areas uh, in transplantation of changing practice. The first is changes to the immunosuppressive regimes that we use. The second is antiviral management. And finally, uh, surgical and technical aspects of transplantation. At the outset, I think it's important to reflect that if we were dependent on trials or on evidence-based medicine during the pioneers of transplantation, then there are several people here in the audience who would not be doing the job that we're doing. And this is an early report in 1963 of some of the early uh, results of kidney transplantation of 244 transplants that have been performed. Within three months of transplantation, 45% of those from living-related donors had failed, and 85% of those from unrelated donors had also failed. Nine grafts survived more than one year, and three of those failed within the second year. Liver transplantation fared little better. In the very early years, there's a comment about several dozen liver transplants being performed, and no patients had survived longer than a year. A report at the end of 1971 really um, produced similar results with only 17% of patients surviving more than one year. I don't know if we can get rid of that little addition on the right hand side. So I think it's fair to say that if we based our evidence on those early years of transplantation, then it never would have happened and we would not be uh, transplanting hundreds of patients every year. <coughs> One early trial that did change practice was published in The Lancet in 1978 by Roy Kahn and his colleagues from Cambridge. And this was based on seven patients who had received cadaveric renal transplants and had been treated for the first time with the calcineurin inhibitor cyclosporin, which was found to be effective in inhibiting rejection. So that five patients had left hospital with functioning grafts, one patient had had to undergo a graft nephrectomy because of sepsis within the graft, and one patient had died from overwhelming sepsis. But cyclosporin really became the mainstay of immunosuppressive therapy from about 1983 until the mid-1990s, when tacrolimus, a new calcineur inhibitor, uh, came into the frame. And this is some of the early trials of tacrolimus versus cyclosporin in liver transplantation, Two randomized multicenter trials, one in the States and one in Europe. Interestingly, the comparison groups were not equal in the sense that the Tacrolimus group did not treat the base thyroid in addition, the cyclosporin group was. But at one year, the Tacrolimus group seemed to result in fewer acute rejections and a lower rate of steroid resistant or therapy resistant rejection. Similar findings were found in renal transplantation at that stage. Similarly designed studies, this time both tacrolimus and cyclosporin groups were treated with azathioprine and steroids. And again, at one year, the uh, lower rate of biopsy proven acute rejection in the tacrolimus group compared to the cyclosporin group. But no difference in graft survival. And this is a common thread that we'll be seeing over the next few slides. These early trials were powered for short-term outcome and rarely um, will reflect a change in graft survival. And really that's one of the limitations of these early studies. The second is that the initial uh, formulation of cyclosporin was poorly water-soluble and had very poor uh, pharmacokinetics. So it depended partly on the, what the patient had eaten or, or drunk on that day. And so it's a lot of inter-patient and intra-patient variability. And at about the same time as these trials were going on versus tacrolimus, they developed a microemulsion of cyclosporin with more reliable pharmacokinetics and less interpatient variability, and therefore a more reliable immunosuppressive effect. But the early trials prepared sacrolimus against the original cyclosporin. And it wasn't until this study was published in the Lancet in 2002, which compared, we could see a comparison between sacrolimus and the modified cyclosporin. And this was a European multicenter study with uh, over 200 patients in each group. All patients were treated with azathioprine and steroids. Once again, the primary endpoints of the study were early time points, 
biopsy proving acute rejection and time to rejection. And I hope you can see this graph here, which demonstrates with the metacrylinus group, there is a lower rate of biopsy proving acute rejection when compared with the cyclo modified cyclosporin um, group. And so this really established tacrolimus as one of the mainstays of immunosuppression. And the majority of uh, transplant units across the UK, I think now, would use that as their main calcineurin inhibitor. Azathioprine was really one of the very early uh, drugs used. And in the very early days, it was used. It was the only drug available. It was used on its own, on its own. And there was a very difficult balance to strike between the high toxicity of azathioprine and its effectiveness in combating rejection. But it was used alongside the calcineurin inhibitors, as I've described, until the mid-1990s, when again, a new, uh, and, sorry, a new drug came onto the block, as it were, microphenolate, mofetil, or MMF. And this was compared, to, these two drugs were compared in, in randomized controlled trials, um, MMF at two different doses against azathioprine and placebo, with maintenance of the cyclosporin and steroids. Again, early primary endpoints of biopsy proof of acute rejection or treatment failure, which was a change in the immunosuppressive regime or allograph failure. And again, early reporting of this study. And in, sorry, of these studies. In both the studies, MMF was found to be superior to azathioprine at six months, but again, no reported difference in graft or patient survival at three years. Once again, not <coughs> And it really took a, a study which used <coughs> registry data to establish the role of MMF in improving long-term outcome. And this is one of the advantages of transplantation. We have patients who are followed up in the long term, and we have registry data both in the UK and the US, which whilst not completely reliable and not always a complete data set, does have the benefit of being able to look at a very large number of patients and therefore look at the impact on specific drugs. And in this study, MMF confirmed, reduced the rates of acute rejection, and actually, um, in this study, we saw a significantly improved graft survival at four years of MMF compared with azathioprine. And interestingly, and this has gone on to uh, have an impact on further studies that have been undertaken, MMF seemed to reduce the risk of chronic allograft failure independent of acute rejection. So acute rejection is only one risk factor for the subsequent development of chronic allograft failure following renal transplantation. And so MMF does seem to have an impact on that, which is independent of acute rejection. So we now have clearly established and effective immunosuppressive regimes, which have significantly reduced the rates of acute rejection following transplantation. To, so in a sense, we've combated acute rejection to a large extent. But what we are now faced with is the impact of the toxicity of these drugs. And so in a sense, the studies have turned their attention to try to reduce the toxicity of some of these immunosuppressive regimes. The calcium neural inhibitors have the um, unfortunate effect of being nephrotoxic in themselves. And so the patients have to be maintaining very tight trough levels of tacrolimus or cyclosporin. And even at those levels, in the longer term, they, they are nephrotoxic. In addition, they cause impaired glucose tolerance and hypertension, hyperlipidemia. So this study um, was, uh, the aim of this study was to try and reduce the dose of calcium neural inhibitors in preserving anti-rejection therapies whilst reducing the toxicity. And this is the Elite Symphony study that was published uh, a few years ago initially. And this compared standard dose cyclosporin with MNF and steroids. Or uh, this is a monoclonal antibody, anti-IL2 receptor antibody, which is used as an induction therapy with MMF steroids, and compared low-dose cyclosporin, low-dose tacrolimus or low-dose serolimus, which has a, a different mode of action from the CNRs. The primary endpoint was estimated renal function at 12 months, with secondary endpoints of acute rejection and allograft survival. 